if you scratch a coward, you will find a tyrant. Every coward is actually hiding his inner tyrant. And there's no, he's not in between. It's a, it's a seesaw. Coward, boom, tyrant. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. I grew up with a very loud and angry father. At a young age, I decided I want to be the opposite. As a result, I have made myself into a nice and quiet guy. However, I realized that I need to become more dominant if I want to have success in business and with women. How do I break my nice guy conditioning and become dominant man without becoming a tyrant? And so it's interesting, when I read your question, I thought of myself too, because you know my dad's a very loud guy and I wouldn't call him angry, but he can get angry. He's been angry. My dad is a tough guy. And he, he didn't think it was a problem to be a tough guy because he grew up in the jungle. And if you weren't a tough guy, well, then you got eaten alive, right? It was just the environment he grew up. He didn't grow up in America where there's this conspiracy against the man, against men to turn us into women. And I grew up in under this conspiracy. And so I was under the impression that there was something wrong with my dad. Why is my dad so loud and why is he so aggressive, right? And also, uh, the, my mother would, she doesn't denigrate my father, but she would always be like, uh, your father is so arrogant. And she still does it to this day, but she loves, uh, now I understand what she's doing. She's shit testing him and she's just, she's just being a woman. Um, oh, your father's so arrogant. Why, why doesn't he just chill out? Why doesn't he just calm down? He's so tough. Why can't he just going to soften up a little bit? And so my mom would, even when I was a kid, would complain about my dad that way. And in a, like I said, in our world, which is, which is gynocentric and is feminizing to, to men, we tend to, if not, if not careful, lean towards wanting to please mommy. And so we grow up wanting to please mommy, and then that turns into wanting to please women. And because we're surrounded mostly by women, you know, most of us, we don't have, there's not enough, there's no fathers around. There's, you know, most of us, it's like 60% don't have fathers, don't have strong fathers. Schools are all women, and we're raised by women, we're around women, and we're trying to please women, and we grow up that way. And so we don't know we don't know uh, that there's a different way. We think that we're supposed to be like girls. We think we're supposed to be pleasing. And women are, they don't even, they don't really want men that are like women. They don't. But mommy wants you to be a good boy. The teacher wants you to sit down and shut up. And then so we project that, that whole sense of how to be uh, around, you know, mommy and teachers with little girls. And then we, you know, they teach us like you're supposed to be kind to the little girls. And so we become we become pushovers, we become softies. And not only that, if like you and like me, we resent, we were taught to resent alpha males. Like my father. I'm not saying your father, but you know, you, if your father was truly an angry man, all, ang all angry, that's not um that's not very alpha like him but of him. But if he's just an aggressive, assertive strong man it's very easy to grow up resenting that resenting that and if you resent that in your father you're going to resent it in yourself that's what happened to me i was i have a lot of beta characteristics I'm, i've grown up out of a lot of them but i'll tell you why i grew up i was able to overcome a lot of my inner beta by forgiving my father and atoning with him re recognizing the value of the type of man that he is. And so my advice to you is the same, is to first of all, forgive your father. Forgive your father for he, do, he doesn't know. Whatever he did that was maybe tr truly abusive to you, and, and you know, you gotta be careful too with this whole idea of abuse. A lot of it is, is, is fake abuse, meaning like it's made up. Like you were, a lot of people who say they were abused, they weren't really abused. They just had fucked up parents because everybody's fucked up. If you're, Everybody screws up their kids. Nobody has, does not screw up their kids. Everybody's kids are screwed up. Everybody is screwed up. There's not a single person on this planet that's not traumatized. Just by mere virtue of being here is trauma. But 
in our world where they teach us that victimhood is victory, everybody, you know, wants to think back at all the bad things that happened to them and blame somebody. And of course, they're going to blame their parents. You can blame your parents for freaking everything. Right. And of course, the father. So you got we have to get over our own your issue. You say that your father you was very loud and angry, but your issue is you say that you turned into a nice guy, but you're, that's not a real nice guy. That's a that's called passive aggressive. You're passive aggressive. You're a fake nice guy, a fake nice guy who's trying to hide his anger. You actually have your father's anger. And you're angry at your father. And as a result, like you say, you decided to be the opposite. But now you're now you're denying yourself. You're denying who you really are by trying to see for so you say you're being the opposite of your father. That's in a way you're being in defiance of your father. And that's rebellion. And no, we can never really be ourselves if we're trapped in rebellion. Because to rebel or to protest is to go against. And you're really going against, like, especially in the case of your father, you're really going against yourself. So you have to atone with your, with your father. We're, we're, regardless of whatever happened in between you and him, I don't know. I don't know the, the whole story. But you got to be able to see your father for who he is and start to, start to see the value in his aggression. You got to be able to recognize the value in the way he in the way he is, even if you don't like it, even if you don't like it, because the you're not going to like yourself because that's you. You're, you're his essence. Right. And so you want to break that nice guy conditioning. That's the first step is recognize that your dad was on to something and it's OK. And you you don't have to continue to rebel against him. You can atone with him. You could. And it starts with forgiveness. You can atone him. And that way, you, I love the way you put it. You say you want to become a dominant man without being a tyrant. Robert Moore, the creator, uh, you know, neo Jungian analyst who came up with King Warrior, Magician Lover. He, you know, the tyrant, the tyrant is the, uh, is the immature king, is an immature king. And there's two polarities of the immature king, the imbalanced king. There's the coward and there's the tyrant. And so the coward is the negative uh, polarity and the, uh, the tyrant is the positive polarity. Not that there's negative, bad and positive, good, but meaning like there's the, there's the withdrawn king and there's the o overly overt king, right? Both of them are making up for lack. So one of the things Robert Moore says is that if you, if you scratch a coward, you will find a tyrant. Every coward is actually hiding his inner tyrant. And there's no, it's not in between. It's a, it's a seesaw. Coward, boom, tyrant. And it's because the, the, the coward is hiding his aggression. And when you hide aggression, it, it, uh, it grows perverted. And, it, and then it lashes out. So instead of being assertive, you become aggressive. Aggression is anger. Assertiveness is balance. Right? Assertiveness is right in between. Assertiveness is speaking up, saying what you have to say, doing what you have to do, being respectable, but also being grounded. And so if you see that seesaw, assertiveness is like right in the middle. Coward, tyrant. Fearful, aggressive, angry. And so you're going to find yourself, if you don't atone, you're going to find yourself teeter-tottering between oh, meek me, quiet me, good, goody two-shoe me, goody boy me, nice and quiet, 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 nice guy, and then how dare you? I've been so nice all this time. Right? And it just comes out of nowhere. It's because if you scratch that, that it's a fake. That's why I called you fake before. Uh, you know, I'm not trying to knock you, but it's fake. You're nice. You're not really a nice guy. You're an angry guy faking nice. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? And so you're playing this coward role to cover up. You're a tyrant.
So, you know, you say you want to break the nice guy conditioning, which is the which is the fake, without becoming a tyrant. And that's the that's exactly what the problem is. You want to make your, you want to find yourself right in the middle. And that means being assertive, right? Assertive. The best way you could start being assertive is by merely recognizing, like recognizing and believing what, what you sense. Let me put it this way. If somebody cuts you in line, right? Somebody cuts you in line, cuts you off, cuts you off in traffic, whatever it is. But better if it's in line because you're looking face to face with people. He cuts you in line or, or does something rude. A, t a, a coward will just, he's not going to say anything. He's going to be like, or like the guy could be like stepping on his foot. And the coward is just be like, oh, 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 I hope he, I hope he gets off my foot soon. Oh, I don't want to say anything. I don't want to trigger this person, right? That's what the nice guy is going to do. The tyrant is going to be like, the fuck you stepping on my shoe for? I'll bust you up right now. What? What? And then he'll grab for his gun or something like that, right? That's the two extreme opposites. An assertive person recognizes what is happening. Oh, hey, excuse me, sir. You're stepping on my shoe right now. Oh, it's not a problem. Yeah, just watch where you're stepping. Okay, cool. Have a nice day. That's being assertive. It's in a very calm, very grounded way, speaking up for what's going on. Right? Somebody, you know, they... they this happens a lot of time, like in, say for in a restaurant, right? In a restaurant, look for opportunities where you can practice this. In a restaurant, you ask the guy to bring you one meal, but he bring you the wrong thing, or he didn't bring, he, he, he screwed up the order somehow. Uh, the coward will receive it and say, oh, oh man, oh, he messed this up. Oh, it's okay, you know, it's all right. You know, he won't even say anything. He'll just, he'll just eat it, right? It's, even though it's not what he wanted. The tyrant, is gonna be like, hey, what's wrong with you? This is not what I ordered. I'm not paying for this. This is outrageous. Can I speak to a manager? Right? That's what a tyrant's gonna do. An assertive person will simply say, excuse me, sir. Yes, uh, I ordered uh, X, Y, Z, and I noticed that this is A, B, C. Uh, can we do something about this? Oh, yeah, oh, no problem. And then they'll take care of it. It's just speaking up, right? You say that, if you're going to be a dominant man, is being dominant, is that's a nice word. That's cool. I understand what you're saying. You want to become more dominant if you want to have success. But do, to, to be dominant means to dominate. You really are not dominating anyone except your inner bitch. That's really what, when we become a dominant man, we're just dominating our inner effeminacy. For most of us, it's effeminacy. And like I said, even the tyrant, the tyrant is a coward on the inside too. Because he's effeminate as well. He's acting out of anger. And that anger, anger is usually a front for fear. Anger is a front for fear. So the tyrant is also soft on the inside. So it's all effeminacy. So to be dominant is to dominate your inner beta. That guy that says, oh, be quiet, don't do anything. Or that guy that wants to lash out. Both is beta. Lashing out is beta. Because you're coming out of anger, and if you come from anger, you're usually coming from fear. Anger, nine times out of ten, anger is a front for fear. Or you're just straight up fearful when you're being a coward. So it's just a matter of speaking up, but nine times out of ten, it's, it's the conversations you're having with yourself first. You notice something that's not right, you just speak up and say something without being afraid of other people or being afraid of what they're going to say, but at the same time, not shitting on them. Does that make sense? <laughs> I was a little, little long-winded on that one. It was one of those days. So uh, I hope that that's all clear and that's helpful, dude. Done. Yo, it's your bro, Elliot Hulse here, and I hope you enjoyed that video. If you did, you ought to know that it was a clip from one of my most recent sessions with my King Transformation students, where, among other things, we get together about four or five hours a week, and we speak on things related to becoming kings in our lives. If that sounds like you, you're interested in joining a like-minded group of men who are growing stronger every day, in every way, in this degenerate age, then it's real simple. Just follow me on Instagram and then DM me the word king, K-I-N-G, and me and my team will get back to you with the details to see if you qualify to join us. 
Hope to see you at our next meeting. Done. <laughs>